Maybe some of you already can guess where I am right now. And if you're one of the people who guessed that I'm in back in Wingelen, where my wife Tasty grew up, you guessed absolutely 100% correct. I'm back on the old mountain gravel roads driving to a place called Brathöa, where there is a mountain which is 1000 221 meter above the ocean. By that area, Bratoa, my father-in-law, Mons, he was herding sheep there back in the day and he's been talking so many times about how beautiful it is up there. So I figured I have the time, I have a car, I'll just drive up there and have a look for myself. And uh, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, but slight slight challenge i haven't been there before so i was pulled over and i took out the map to just check approximately where to make a turn to get there so this is going to be really exciting it feels good to be out there these clouds as you can see are really heavy with rain but also very very beautiful and moody so i hope it stays like this so we don't get a lot of rain but so far it looks really really promising and there's a bit of a wind today so the mosquitoes and flies are missing as well and that's just perfect because my whole back is just ridden with mosquito bites from a hike i had recently to a swamp where i was photographing some cotton flowers and they just ate me up <laughs> So I'm glad. I'm really glad to get. Uh, there's no mosquitoes right now. But I've located the route, so I'm just going to go back in the car, and then we're off, I guess. All right, this is going to be great. All right. That might very well have been the coolest road I've ever driven on. <laughs> what an entrance. So this, this is Brathör, Fjellseter. I'm not sure of the English name for it, but it's kind of the place, the base for the sheep herders. This is the area where my father-in-law Mons were herding sheep back in the days. And my wife, Chasti, she tells me that uh, when she spent the night here, sometimes they was awakened by the sound of the uh, wild r reindeer kind of rubbing against the corner of the cabin. So that was kind of the, the wake up sound. And if we're really lucky, we can see some uh, reindeer up here. And uh, there's also moose, bear, uh, wolverines and lynx, I think. So, a lot of potential <laughs> for <laughs> some wildlife photography. Imagine just living here for a couple of months, and this is this is your home. Pretty neat, huh? No internet, no phone, no TV, no outside clutter. Just you, the sheep in the mountains. If 
if I've read my map correctly, this is Bratur. So it's not that far, but it seems like the trail is going up there. And then we're probably going to follow the ridge up towards Bratur. But there are some dark clouds coming from my left here. And I'm not sure how the weather is going to be when I return here. So I'm going to take a picture of Bratuvol while the weather is good. It, the, the light is a bit harsh, but I'm still going to take the picture now. And I'm thinking I'm going to use the path as kind of a leading line into, into the uh, Setra. So uh, I think this will work pretty well. So this is my image. Beautiful place. <laughs> of course I cropped out my car doesn't belong here, doesn't belong. Pretty cool scene, eh? You see how the the creek has made this tunnel that goes pretty far inwards. And the sun has melted some holes in the snow, so there's kind of spots of light peeping through. It, it's a beautiful scene. And to top it off, there's this water dripping from the ice ceiling, kind of creating these beautiful uh, lines of water down at the the creek itself at the bottom. I've set up as low as I can go and I'm using a fairly wide aperture. I'm at f16 and I think I'm around maybe 25 of a second in my shutter. Let's just hang on for a second. Yeah I'm at 25 so that kind of gives me enough focus range so I can get the whole scene in focus and not burn out any uh, of the beautiful highlights with the spots of light coming through. I really like this one. You never know what you're gonna find and this certainly was unexpected. <laughs> So I've snooped around some more and I found two more compositions that I really, really like. And the first one involves these kind of wings that goes upwards towards the blue sky. And, I, and if you stay as low as you can, can get, you can still get the whole angle inwards. Really, really beautiful. I think I like this composition a lot more than the previous one. And the second composition is kind of way, way in right here. I haven't photographed. I haven't photographed it yet, but it's kind of something like this. I'm gonna photograph those two now. Really pleased with this location, I really like it. I got a bit carried away down there, but what can you do when you stumble over kind of a hidden world underneath the ice, just below our feet. All right, I think I need to get going if I'm going to make this in time. There's still a bit to go, but uh, not that far. Oh, what a beautiful day. But it just goes to show, if you spend some time on a scene, learn to know it better, at least that works for me every time, you see a composition, you photograph it, and if you just 
maybe this, maybe that, maybe that, maybe this. And it, suddenly it grows on you and you kind of just gets better and better, I think, sometimes. Sometimes you get completely lost, but not this time. This time the composition got gradually better, so I like, I like, me like. Okay, down there, that's where we parked our car. Haven't walked that far, still a long way to go. <laughs> All right. Never in a million years I would have thought that I could get so close without it flying away. I was almost three, maybe three, four meters from it before it flew away. And that's one of the reasons why I always carry my Micro Four Third with the 300 millimeter lens. The, uh, it's equivalent to almost 600 millimeter, I think. So I could get really, really close with that lens just because of situations like that. I think I got some great pictures. <laughs> Maybe Trun Vespi will like them. <laughs> He's my pal who he runs a really great YouTube channel photographing birds and other wildlife. You can check him out right here. But Maybe he would like those. I don't know. I'm not a wildlife photographer, but I, I try my best. <laughs> All right. Apparently. I'm not a sheep herder. <laughs> see as far as the eye can see in all four sky directions. I think that mountain pass over there, I think that's Rondane, beautiful mountain region. You can see the snow falling over the mountainsides. And out here in Fugelhogna, it's just It's really beautiful.
can't believe I beat the rain. While I was down there, it was blowing quite a bit. And I figured when I get to the top, there's going to be wind and there's going to be rain. And the wind has ceased. There's no wind. And uh, the rain has moved further that way. So it missed me. So <laughs> life is full of good, small little surprises today. If you have, I think if you have a really good binocular and you stay here for a couple of hours, you're bound to see some reindeer down there. Because it's really open landscape. It's barren. All I want to do is just continue on. I can see a lake up there. <laughs> I don't have my tent with me, so that would be somewhat difficult. Besides, I have a life waiting for me down there. <laughs> well, I'm gonna grab something to eat and then I'm gonna see if I can find a composition. While I was waiting for the water to boil for, the, for my dinner, I was looking towards the horizon and I saw two mountain peaks which I was able to pick out with the 200 millimeter. And on the left side of those peaks, there were some really interesting clouds at that moment. And uh, I think I really like it. My other idea for a composition up here is towards this direction. You can see here, you can see the mountain road, which I was driving towards when I was arriving to Bratteur, the set Satellon. And uh, I figured if I go down to that little little cliff there I can get a really good shot of that mountain road so that's gonna be my final image and with that I think it's high time for me to get down from this mountain and get back to civilization again <laughs> it's been it's been a really nice couple of hours and uh, thank you so much for joining me on this little trek hope you enjoyed it I know I don't uh, upload so regularly anymore but I figured when I do upload, I want the videos to be really, really good. So I'm thinking quality over quantity nowadays. <laughs> so I hope, I hope that's okay with you, with you all. All right. Again, thank you so much for watching and please stay safe and take care of each other. Bye bye. This hike up in Bratteur was not the only hike I had around that time. Not by a long shot. The very next day, my good friends Hans and Signe took me out where the wild moose roams. And boy, did we meet the beautiful beasts. It's not often I get to see them this close. And these following four photographs might be my best moose pictures to date. Animals are all approximately two-year-old males and they were quite curious and didn't spook that easy. This allowed me to get pretty close before they decided to bolt away. But moose was not all we saw. The next day after this, my father-in-law invited me and a few others for his annual birthday hike up in the mountains and this time we saw something quite extraordinary. Wild reindeer. This was my very first encounter, 
and the wind was not in my favor. I huddled down in the moss and slowly crept closer and closer to the herd, inch by inch, and after around 30 minutes I was starting to get quite close. And this is pretty normal after mating season. When the males don't compete with each other, they tend to stick together until the next season starts. I couldn't believe my luck. The herd didn't notice me for quite some time and this allowed me to observe and film their behavior for a good 20 minutes. I got in a few photographs as well, but nothing that I'm super proud of composition wise. I just couldn't get close enough without them noticing me. After a while one of the males saw or smelled me and they marked their territory before bolting up the hill. After this experience I went on a few hikes both with Chasti and on my own. I didn't film any of these hikes but I would like to end this video with a few photographs I took in this period. I hope you like them, stay safe and take care. See you out there.